Hey, welcome back to The Past is Alive. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Turn Back the Clock Tuesday. And tonight we're heading back to 1996 with a Series 1 hobby box of Fleer Ultra. Haven't opened any of these in quite some time, been quite a few years. But Fleer Ultra in the 90s was always usually riddled full of insert cards. And whenever I was a kid, it's primarily what I ripped packs to find was inserts and rookie cards. So still doing the same thing all these years later. We have a 300-card base set for the first series and a slew of inserts. There's probably about a dozen um, overall for both series, but uh, probably about half that for Series 1. So hopefully we can see some of these. 96 was a relatively dull year for rookie cards overall. Um, most of them made it into the Bowman set, but uh, as far as the other brands, not really so much. Uh, as far as notable rookies go, but you can see a glimpse of what some of the ones we're looking for tonight. Always uh, had really cool designs for these ones. So we'll see if we can pull some of those tonight. The best base card overall, um, probably a Mo Rivera. A little deceiving because it's his, his card that, from what I remember, it says rookie around the front of it. But uh, his actual rookie card is 92 Bowman, as I'm sure most of you know. But uh, <clears throat> Mo didn't first pitch in the majors until spring in 95. So it's a little deceiving, but uh, probably the best card overall in this series. We're going to go ahead and rip into this. As you guys know, I am a hoarder, so I keep my boxes. I don't slash into them. So what's happening, everybody? Thanks for being here. Poots Lemons was at Matt Williams' final year at the Giants. Yeah, I believe so, man. Nice uh, shiny full packs here. We have four participants. John A in the top left. Corey J for Ripping for Ripkins in the top right. And Joseph B snagged the entire bottom. Hey, Hunter. Elkanon. What's happening, you guys? Thank you for being here. We'll start with the top left as usual. And work our way around. Upper decks is let's see some Eric Plunk cards. Yeah, we may see some in here, man. So, John A. is on the clock first. I think John A. is a Yankees fan being from New York, so I'm, hope, I'm sure he's probably hoping for that Mo Rivera. But let's check the odds in the back of the pack. It doesn't really look like we really have any odds. Just the actual inserts themselves, but a decent amount overall. Uh, the odds, one to three packs to one in 75, so kind of generic. Frank Deeses, did Wathen make this set? I don't think he's in here. You get one gold, medall gold medallion covered pack, and it looks like we have Big Mac on top. That is a nice one. Jay Hadley, I saw he's in here. Um, not sure if you have that one or not, but this is probably one of the best cards we're going to see tonight. A Jeter insert card right off the bat here. That is a nice one. Golden Prospects. John A., that's probably one of the ones you were hoping for, honestly. Very good-looking car. I've never seen this insert set before. But uh, real nice Jeter there. I like that one a lot. Big Mac, gold medallion, and Jeter off the bat. And a checklist card for Barry Bonds. These are actually inserts as well. So like I said before, chock full of insert cards. Uh, checklists normally were part of the base set, but uh, not in this year. Two of ten for the Bonds. Hey, Eric Z, what's happening? So far, so good here. Carl Everett. Let's see, as it says, rookie on Carl Everett, even though his actual rookie cards are in 91. Trip Cromer, Todd Worrell, Tyler Green, Chris Hoyles. I think uh, Ripping for Ripkins actually PCs him. That was prime time. And Carlos Bayerga, or as we called him when we were kids, Carlos Berga. So, very nice first pack there. <clears throat> Two inserts and then the medallion of Big Mac. Pretty freaking sweet pack. Off to a great start. Dallas Foster, what's happening, man? Moving on to pack number two. Yeah, that Jeter was really nice. I was hoping we were going to see uh, see that card tonight. Did not think it would be in the first pack. Mike Blowers leads things off. And it looks like in the second pack, another insert card. This, one, this time it's for Johnny Damon. Golden Prospects. Cool looking cards. I like those. Not too shabby at Damon. Of course, these are flipped around every single which way. The medallion cards are nice. They are one per pack. Chris Hammond, Todd Jones. 
Bill Swift, Ozzie Timmons, Jorge Fabriguez, Mike Greenwell. I'm not going to read all the names and do that whole thing, but there's a Bernie, another Yankee for you, and Greg Vaughn. Paul else is Mike Greenwell, yes. I think it's safe to say that Mike Greenwell is a new omen on this channel, whether you want to consider him a bad one or good. He's there. It looks like, I think this is a Hideo Nomo uh, insert card. I'm pretty sure because I was obsessed with that card back in the mid-90s. Todd Hunley leading it off with the gold medallion. He's like almost look like they're fingerprints. And it is. It is the Nomo's second year card. This was a hot one back then. I, I think I, <clears throat> I bought that as a single at a card shop back in like 96 or 97 and was really, really pumped about it. 10 card insert set for fresh foundations. Unfortunately, that set is not really a high dollar set whatsoever. These are one in three packs. Upper deck, gold cards. The gold medallion cards are in every single pack, yes. These are one in three packs on all are the average odds. Nice Nomo, though. Probably one of the better ones you could pull out of that insert set. And there's a nice Sosa RBI Kings. First time seeing those tonight. Had this card as a kid as well. And that's a 10-card insert set is also. Hey, Brittany, what's happening? Chuck Knobloch after that. And <clears throat> thicker card stock, as you can see on the front of here, 40% thicker. So it kind of feels like some of them are stuck together. Deceiving. Hey, Eric Zee says, does this box have hot packs with all inserts? It like, seems like that so far. It's a Jay Bell and Kurt Abbott with a scum stash. There's AFC. It says something that drives something that drives me crazy about older cards, rookie logos or words on cards that aren't actually rookies. So misleading. Oh, and hi, Brittany. Thank you, Jonathan H. I appreciate that, man. Thank you for being here, buddy. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying when we first came in. The uh deceiving rookie print on front of these cards. Like the Mo Rivera. Mo Rivera says rookie right in nice bright letters in the front of his card, even though his actual rookie card is 92. So if Jeter's in this base set, I'm willing to probably guess that he's all his also says rookie on it. Jody Reed is the uh gold medallion. What's up, Corey? Or Craig B. What's happening? Another Nomo of Fresh Foundations. And didn't quite find an insert on after that one. Back to back Nomos. <clears throat> Frank Deese is out of Garrett Anderson, I believe. Sandy Martinez. It's a nice Hoffman. Ron Karkovice, he was another guy that always looks so old. Billy Ashley. Bill Van Landingham. <laughs> Craig B came in just in time. And Ishringhausen is the embossed gold medallion. Cool looking set, though. I haven't seen these in so many years, so it's fun to go back and look through these. Craig B says, all I do is work. Well, hopefully it goes fast for you tonight, man. John Eriks leading off here. Gold medallion. I don't remember John Eriks at all. And it looks like we have another insert here of Matt Williams. Elkanon. I know you PC him. Home Run King exchange card. I can't say that I've ever seen these. Send this card in to receive a Home Run King wooden insert card and watch for their exchange cards. Complete your 12-card Home Run King set. I wish I gave us actual odds of... What it is to pull these ones, but uh, that's a pretty cool looking card. I like that. Probably like uh, 10 or so inserts in that set. <laughs> There's Craig. It says, I thought you liked me, John. I show up and you pull Bill Van Landingham. WTF. Yeah, that was some pretty good timing there, man. That is some pretty good timing indeed. Thank you for that, Craig. Appreciate you popping in before work, man. Yeah, this is a redemption card. It says it expires on the 1st of 1996. I didn't give you a whole lot of time to redeem that. I don't know if there's actually any value to those before you redeem them. There's Butch, Hus Butch Husky. Ellis Burks. Oh, the glove on his head. Yeah, nice looking cards, though. I like these. There's Tino. Albert Bell. Strawberry. Brad Klontz. So far, we've seen what, like, uh, I don't know, eight eight inserts, maybe even more than that, out of the first stack. I was kind of worried these were going to stick, Jay, or Jay's openings. Um, 
I think, are you still, are you going live after this tonight, Jay? I guess I didn't ask you earlier. Right on top, Jeff Conine leading off, gold medallion, and we cannot do a 90s break without pulling inserts of this guy. Raul Mondesi. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. We got back to back Edmonds and Mondesi. I always liked these cards though when I was younger. I thought they were really pretty cool looking. Edmonds, not a bad one at all. Paul Ellis' jailbreak. Jeff Facero. No sign of the Mo Revere yet. But I think, like, there's an Eck. I think all the best Hall of Famers that you can pull from this set are really in Series 1. Hey, Jay's Mix, what's happening? Joe Yankee says Mondesi and Lo Isaac and Shara sell drug kingpins. Jay's opening says, I will go live after you. All right. I thought so, but I wasn't entirely sure. So Jay's openings, if you're not subbed to him, he's going live tonight doing 97 Bowman. So that's a pretty freaking awesome set. I want to say he's doing Series 2 tonight. Um, I think the Holiday Rookie card is in Series 2. And Lance Berkman, probably the biggest one to pull out of there. So I'll be heading over there after this stream's over. But good stack for John A. That Jeter was really nice. Probably my favorite card out of that one. There's Ripping for Ripkins. Next up, we got the man himself in the top right. I'm sure looking for Ripken inserts. Al Padrique, LOL. Jem Mince's 97 bone is a great set. Yeah, hopefully I see you over there in Jay's openings live stream um, right after this. Go check that out and wish him luck for his... He did a test live stream earlier. But his first official live stream is after this tonight. So we've got a Brent Gates leading off here for Corey. And <laughs> Corey can never, ever escape insert cards of Raul Mondesi himself. So we've got a Piazza coming up, so that's a nice nice one to look forward to. But we've got our checklist card. Could it be a Ripken? It is a kid himself. That is a pretty awesome one. Probably the, one of the best ones you could pull out of that insert set. Good looking card there. I like that one a lot. Very nice. Four out of ten. <laughs> Ripping for Ripken says I get him every break. You always get stuck with the Raul Mondesi insert cards. Hey, Criterion Racer. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a fun break so far. Curtis Goodwin on top. Here's a Molitor. I would have loved to have that as a kid. And another <laughs> Bernard Gilkin. I don't know if I've ever seen that one. And there's a Piazza. Nice looking card. No escaping Gilkey. Chuck Chicago says, what's the hot card to pull from this set? Nothing really in particular, mostly just uh, going after inserts. But uh, we pulled that Jeter insert, which is, I don't know, could be like the box hit. That would be nice if that was a gold medallion Jeter. It's Russ Davis instead. These ones are kind of bricked up a little bit, but doesn't seem like we'll see any paper loss. Yeah, see these fresh foundation cards, they're really easy to pull, as you can see. There's a Gary Anderson on top here. And... He's the first card of the insert set. Gilkey and Mondesi fire. Brad Ausmus is a Mo Vaughn for Dave Durango, who I don't think is in here. There's an Edgar and a Will Clark. Oh, yeah, hard to tell if these are stuck together or not because how thick they are. There's a Dave Justice, a decent pack. Derek Bell, who never cared for him, Dante, and Ray Sanchez. Some nice stars in that pack. Benjamin Black, how you doing, buddy? We have, what, four packs left for Corey here. Does Montessi do TTM? You'd have to write to the Warden. There's a Bill Pulsifer. Probably been really stoked to pull that back in 96. And a Will Clark insert here. Um, I haven't seen these ones yet, but I remember these. Prime Leather. These ones are also embossed. Cool looking insert card. And the second one of an 18 card set. Jim Mintz says, I'm still impressed. You got 1989 for deck boxes for $10 each. Each, Yeah, that was um, definitely the fun of the decade for me, man. Just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Chuck Finley, Reggie Sanders. would have. I definitely would have missed out on those if I did not go down. I was originally going to... Um, 
postpone it and go down the next day. I went down on a Saturday. I was going to go down on Sunday instead. And then uh, I decided to go down Saturday afternoon. And I'm sure I wouldn't have found him the next day because I guess he said somebody somebody else was coming down to look at stuff. Mark Johnson. So definitely got lucky. Andre Dawson. Goody says, what jail is he in? I will try. Uh, what is he, like somewhere in like the Caribbean? There's a Big Mac base. Saw the gold medallion earlier for Jay's openings. Then there's a pucket. Paul also says, you're probably going back next weekend, John. Let's be honest. I thought about going back on Sunday and just getting the rest, but I think I have a real problem when it comes to buying uh, wax boxes. I thought that was Dennis Cook for a second. Mike Lansing. Yeah, I can't pass on it if it's a good price. Probably because whenever I was a kid, I like I couldn't buy wax boxes. I had no money, and I always wanted to buy them and open them up. And I mean, I think I was like the most stoked I've ever been when I was like I don't know, like early '90s. I bought I think two boxes of '88 Don Russ. It was actually probably like '94, '95, and was like so pumped. I think they were like five bucks each. <laughs> they still are the same price nowadays in 2020. There's a card shop in Connecticut. We would go to it every summer. My dad's mom lived in Connecticut. And we would go up there and visit her every summer. We'd go to this card shop called Rock Sports Cards. And uh, it was freaking awesome. I think I bought a box of 91 Bowman back then. That was obviously a little more money. I was really pumped about that. There's a Caminetti gold medallion. And then uh, uh, here's probably the best card of this insert set. There's a chipper. And that's pretty awesome because... Corey PC's chipper. I'm sure you probably don't have that one. It's kind of a unique one. Five, the fifth card of the set. But yeah, Rock Sports Cards. I tried looking it up on Google to see if it's still there, and I think it's long gone now, but bought two boxes of 88 Don Russ for like five apiece and ripped those and pulled a bunch of Alamars and Galavins and was so pumped about it. And they would sell like 5,000 count boxes for like five bucks a piece. We'd buy those and go through and pull the rookies out. They weren't anything that real great or anything, but uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome. Pat Henkin, so never really had money to buy wax boxes back then, so now it's probably why I literally just uh, savagely buy them all up, even if they're junk wax. It is fun. There's an Aussie Smith, and there's a Ripken. That's pretty awesome. Denny Martinez. Joe Yang, he says these boxes go for 80 bucks on eBay. That's why I snagged two spots in the break. Yeah, I have seen these sell for a good bit. I, f I forget what I what did I sell spots of these for like ten bucks a piece or something like that. I think. Yeah, nice Ripken, man. Fall Creek says, "Did my own no name on front sell a box video tonight?" Not only no no name on front, but no Thomas at all. Boo! I didn't see that. I have to watch that. There's a Jacob Brumfield. That no name on front is impossible to find. It really is. There's a Klesko Fresh Foundation. But yeah, these seem like they're like in almost in every single pack. That's why they really don't have value to me. You probably find all those in a 10 cent box at card shows. And Oddball Cards is great looking cards. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you being here. Oddball Cards. I'm not sure if you have a channel or not. I'll definitely give you a sub after the video is over. Check you out. Everybody else. Please do the same for oddball cards. We got a Randy Johnson here, another nice one. Andy Pettit with uh, the rookie tag on him. His original rookie is 93 upper deck, or not upper deck, 93 uh, Bowman as a Klesko. Paul else is world's greatest pack chase sucks. Yeah, I don't know if I'd ever buy one of those. Jason Bates, there's a Sosa base. Gary D. Sorcina. Joe Yang, says Pettit for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he didn't get that much of the vote uh, this year. Huh? Last I saw, he was around like 10 or 11%. But that was like a week before the voting ended. Garrison is on the same age as Jeter when he was drafted. Yeah, Pettit was awesome. Uh, Eric used to be a huge fan of Andy Pettit back in the mid-90s. There's Craig B. Again, it says hit that thumbs up button. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So John Burkett. And what is this? Season Crowns Bonds. That is a nice looking one. Can't say I've ever come across this set. One of ten. First card of the insert set. Nice uh, transparent card. 
not sure what those odds are, but uh, I'm sure they are a lot more difficult to pull than the uh, fresh foundations. Corey gets lucky with the uh, bonds inserts too. He got another. He got a decent one. I don't know, a few weeks ago. There's a nice bonds that we pulled. Maybe it was out of Metal Universe, I think. Is that an acetate? It looks like it, man. Marquise Grissom, Esteban Loaiza, speaking of him, Joe Yankee was talking about him earlier, doing uh, a lot of years in prison for big uh, cocaine operation. Brad Radke, and it's Pedro Martinez. Nice seeing that. Wally Joyner and Bobby Higginson. A second year for Higginson. What a, that was a nice stack, Corey. You got the... Uh, the Ripken base, the chipper insert, and a couple other really nice inserts, especially that Bonds. To look into that, that's a really cool looking one. <laughs> Chuck Chicago Coke was big in the 80s and 90s. Hey, Ray T, what's happening? Yeah, I'd be pretty pumped about that stack, personally. Moving right on to... Yeah, they, they definitely are really nice cards, no doubt about it. Um... Joseph B, you got the bottom left and bottom right. I want to say that you, like, I, th I think I saw boxes of these on eBay. Somebody's selling boxes that might have had more than one for like, I don't know, 25 bucks plus like $9 shipping. So if you want to get yourself one, I think they might still be on there. Legion, what's happening, man? So we'll just pull all of these out. Since Joe Yankee hogged the entire bottom of the box. <laughs> He was waiting on him, though. Good luck to you, Joe. Got uh, Eckersley Gold Medallion on top here. And a Bagwell. Whoa, this is a nice one. I don't know if we haven't seen it. Power Plus. New to the Hall, Bagwell. Joe Yang says, I love the grab box. Love Ultra. Usually they stick. Yeah, I swear that I saw a box of these on there for like 25 bucks plus like 9 or 10 bucks shipping. Um, I don't know, for the amount of inserts you get, I've always liked Daltra for that reason, because I didn't think that they were, like, super expensive. Um, and, I don't know, the odds for pulling inserts was, were usually pretty good. It's like we got a Chipper Jones checklist insert card. Hey, thanks a lot, Upper Deck 891. I appreciate that, man. Rippy for Ripkin says, Joe Yankee is so fast getting these breaks. I'm glad you could uh, make it, Upper Deck. And there's another Raul Mondesi. Really pissed off. Must have had a uh, foreshadow of his fate years to come. Mike Mussina, another Bonds base. Haven't seen that one yet. Jose Mesa. Tony Gwynn. Frank Thomas. Talk about an all-star pack here. Mussina, Bonds, Gwynn, Thomas. Bagwell insert. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. Chipper, checklist insert, Bagwell, Eck, uh, gold medallion. It's like probably the best pack that I've seen in quite some time as far as that lineup goes. Looks like we got a Jeff Cirillo gold medallion. No one the UPC, Joe Yankee. Fitzy says, when's the next 90 tops break? Uh, I'm on hiatus from 90 tops for the time being. I don't know when I'll go back. Two gold medallions in one pack. That is not supposed to happen. Pretty crazy. Jeff Cirillo, Greg Maddox, 5 of 12. And what is this one? Diamond Producers. I think these are pretty hard to pull. I think these might be only one per box, one per every two boxes. Um, pretty freaking awesome looking card there for Maddox, too. Very nice. Yeah, 90 Tops. I don't know. I might go back to those again someday. I'll buy 90 Tops boxes like if they're from like private sellers, but I'm not going to buy them off eBay just because I feel like they're already all searched and there's really no point at all in going through them. Chuck Finley gold medallion to dual gold medallions in that pack, which is insane. There's a Nomo second year and a Boggs. Nice one for you since you PC Yanks. Javi Lopez. Chat Town, what's happening? Ribby for Ripkins. One in 20 packs for Diamond Producers. Yeah, it's about one a box. These are 24 count boxes. Brian L. Hunter. Vinny Castilla. Luis Gonzalez. Nothing else too notable in that pack. Garrison says, whoever John A is, I will trade you a second-year Griffey Jr. for Derek Jeter from this box. Yeah, John A is probably in here. I feel like he usually is when he's part of uh, the breaks. So far, so good, Joe.
to see a uh, another nice gold medallion. And it looks like I couldn't tell who that was for a second. Alberto Castillo, Golden Prospects. I don't remember him. I don't remember him at all. Paul L can probably shed some light on Alberto Castillo because that name is not ringing any bells for me. There's a Brian L. Hunter. Insert fresh foundations. Rippy Perkins says who? That's what I'm saying. It's like, who is that guy when I first saw him? Alberto Castillo sucked. All right, there's Paul L. There's Eddie Murray, Al Martin, Charles Johnson. Still no sign of uh, Troy Percival of um, the Mo Ribery yet. But we still have close to half the box left, so there's still hope. And here's a nice one. Here's a Gwyn gold medallion. I don't know if, I mean, I would imagine that these little spots will come off kind of easy. I would think so. They look just like fingerprints. But uh, really nice looking card there. Nice Gwyn. And there's a Klesko again. Seen that card a couple times now. Allerude Gant. And everybody's favorite back in like 91. Phil Plantier, probably mine included. Eric Karras, Moore and Dean, Brady Anderson, and Matt Williams again, and Omar. <laughs> More like sick Rillo. I PC the hot cards. Jay's opening says Gwyn was one of the best peer hitters. There's Reindeer Studios. What is up, buddy? And there's Jay Bell, gold medallion. Another Klesko. It's possible he may be a new omen. Seen three or four of that. AF says, any news on, on Wax Pack Jeopardy? Nothing yet. I have to uh, get on that. AF actually was walking me through setting up Streamlabs. And um, I guess you have to incorporate Streamlabs with, with Skype. I got to make it on a night where we can do it. I'd like to do it live and uh, where the three contestants can actually uh, be available to film it. There's an Aussie again, Els Burks, like a repeat of kind of the first pack there. Albert Bell, Strawberry, and Daryl Hamilton. Hey, Arnold, what's happening, man? Glad you were able to make the stream. <laughs> right there, Studios. Wax Pack Jeopardy will happen right after John releases the G.I. Joe video. Hey, Big D, what's up, man? Yeah, it's Junk Wax Jeopardy is turning into the next G.I. Joe video. It's uh, I hate myself for it. I really do. I keep telling myself I'm gonna get motivated and get on these things and then it just doesn't happen. There is that scum stash Kurt Abbott insert card. Put that in the top loader immediately. And here's a nice one, a pocket prime leather. Cards probably aren't too hard to pull since there's 18 cards in the insert set, but uh, I like those. Uh, these designs are pretty awesome. Another bitter beer face of Raul Mondesi. Linda Merced. RL Banks. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Watch your corner says, what are these? 1990 Tops parallel ver variations? <laughs> they might as well be, man. I wish that they were. That's why. After... After this box is done, I'm going to pull out the secret case of 90 Tops that I've been stashed away from you guys for a long time now. First stack down. Joseph B., I thought it was a good one. I know you're nothing that you PC in there, but we still got six more packs left, so hopefully my fat fingers don't knock the camera over. We can pull you something nice. Arnold says 96 Fleur Ultra, nice break. Actually, any break is nice. Well, thanks, man. Um, yeah, it's cool to see these cards again after all these years. Justin Time Card Hunting. Welcome to the stream, man. Appreciate you stopping in. There's a Henderson Gold Medallion. Another nice one. We have another insert card, and it's going to be a Wakefield. I would have been screaming to pull that back in the 90s. Season Crowns. Those are really cool cards. I guess they're not as hard to pull as I originally thought. Uh, 10 of 10, the last card of the insert set, but overall... Very nice looking. And we have a checklist. Three of ten after that one. It's going to be a one gone. 
Brittany Hayden says, <laughs> you know, I love the rip packs, even though John disagrees. Well, yeah, maybe I keep inviting you over and you keep turning me down. That makes me uh, think that you don't like ripping packs. So Jim Tomei. Sean Green. I'm surprised it doesn't say rookie on it. Jeff Kent. Brad Osmus again. Seeing some repeats here. Manny Alexander. Boom Slang. What's happening? First pack in. Pretty nice. Paul also says Brittany will only come over for the G.I. Joe video. <laughs> Whoa, look at this. Look who is on top. Joe. Pretty freaking awesome. It's the Mo Revere gold medallion. Did not expect to see that tonight. Very nice. And Mike Piazza right behind it. So if you can get these... I don't know what those are. I'm sure they probably buff right out, but uh, I've never seen the gold medallion edition of this. I try to keep my oily fingers off this card as best as I can, but uh, best card in the base set, no doubt about it, um, especially this parallel of it. Beautiful looking Mo Rivera. And as you can see, rookie right on there. And... Followed up by a Piazza Power Plus. Have not seen that one yet. Another nice one. Six of 12. Hopefully you're stoked about that Mo. I'll definitely put that in a nice um, protective case. I know you send stuff in, Joe. I can put that in a card saver for you if you like, if you think you're going to send it in. So Mark Grace, Tim Salmon. Another one gone base. Glavin and Mike Hampton. Really stoked that we found that gold medallion. That's pretty awesome. Didn't find the regular version. Power Plus, one of 10 packs. Thank you for the assist on that, Corey. Rico. And going into a Kenny Lofton. Yeah, it's tons of inserts in here. Prime Leather, Lofton. And another Bill Van Landingham for Craig B, if he's still in here. And another Mo. Look at that. Another Mo coming up. Pretty awesome. Joe Yankee. Killing it, man, with these bottom two stacks. The regular base Mo. Obviously the same exact back as the gold medallion. Beautiful. Chuck Chicago says, which boxes after this one, JJ? I don't have any boxes after this one. I was going to take a long hiatus after this and take a month off. <laughs> Pat Mears. That's pretty freaking sick, man. Back to back. Mariano Rivera's. And up next, it looks like we have an Eddie Williams. And who is this? Jose Herrera. I remember him a little bit, but uh, not much about him. Cool looking cards, though, nonetheless. Jim Tomei after that. We saw him already today. Joey Carver says, want to buy my 94 Bowman's Best Holly Box to do next? Yeah, I, I probably would, man. I love 94 Bowman's Best. I've uh I've I'd like to open another one of those actually. Let me know about that, uh, Max. Dave Winfield, Alamar, Hunley, there's a Tim Raines, a nice Hall of Fame pack here, Nomo, and Tony Longmire. AF says my eye doctor started using 91 Fleer Ultra and 90, 90 Don Rust cards for their colorblind test. If your eyes don't water from the extreme yellows and reds, then you'll fail. <laughs> that is great. James Reynolds says, what? You're really going on hiatus? Nah, I'm just going on hiatus from uh, 90 Tops. I can't uh, I can't open any more of those. Not for a little while. Eric Z says, this has been a great, fun pool. Love these cards. This set is awesome. I like it a lot. It's, it's so much fun to go back and look at these after all those years. Especially because I have never seen this many insert cards kind of out of one box. Well, maybe not. Angelo Encarnacion. I remember when he had a short stint with the Buccos. And it looks like it was Roger Cedeno. Golden Prospects, cool looking card. Sean Green. <laughs> Remember your reference says he has too many boxes to go on hiatus. Yeah, you ain't kidding about that, man. I've always 89 Fleer boxes now. I'm going to rip into one of those soon to see if they're... Um, error boxes. If I pull any errors out of out of one of those, I'm sure that all of them are probably from an error case. Gary Anderson, Canseco, I've not seen that one yet. 
And there's a Chipper Jones. Nice one there. And a Bagwell. Chat Town says John's pulling fire. This box has been awesome, man. A big cat. Takes us down to one pack. That's really sad. I don't want this uh, box to ever come to an end. It's been too much fun. Plus the G.I. Joe video he's been neglecting. <laughs> I'm going to do it real soon, man. I'm, I'm so tired of stepping over all my G.I. Joes because they're all upstairs. And um, if I want to go get like a flat rate box, if my flat rate boxes are on one side, I have to like literally articula articulate my steps across the room to step over the G.I. Joes. Almost like broke my leg several times. Even just trying to walk through the room I'm in now. Uh, stepping over like cases and wax boxes and like stacks of cards on the floor. Um, I think Brittany knocked something over like what last week. Knocked one of my cops and crooks figures off the wall because she was trying to work her way across the room. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely like if you've ever seen uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where they're actually at the temple at the very end um, and, and Indy's well, walking across that one room and all the blocks on the floor and slowly stepping from each one. That's what it looks like when I'm walking across my toy room. Trying to spell out Jehovah, like in Latin. And uh, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Chuck Chicago says hoarders. <laughs> Phil's fan. Thanks, man. Another Raul Mondesi, the third one we've seen for that insert set tonight. I'm tired of looking at that card. Jeff Kent, last pack. I think we're exhausted. All of our inserts. This is puffs of air coming out of this pack now. And she's still there. That's love. John Eriks, Jeff Conine, a Henderson, regular base. And Darren Fletcher saying that is all, folks. Sailor Moose is unacceptable. John, you need to correct that. <laughs> he yelled at me for tripping and knocking over stuff. Well, you knocked over a cops and crooks figure in the wall. Of course I had to yell at you for that. Thomas of Dark Knights, does have any Batman cards you don't want? Um... I have a bunch of packs of Batman the Animated Series. I actually passed on a Batman the Animated Series case, a sealed case at that warehouse, and I wish I wouldn't have um, because I think they're pretty rare. Yeah, beautiful looking set. Um, that was a very really fun rip. Um, probably one of my favorites in quite a while. But like I said, if you want to get yourself a box, I think I saw them on eBay the other day for like 25 bucks plus like $10 shipping. Paul Dyche, thanks for being here, man. And Joanne, he said, you yell at poor Brittany, shake my hand. I was just kidding. But uh, thanks for being here. I don't know when the next Turn Back the Clock Tuesday video will be or what box it's going to be, but we'll think of something. Maybe it'll be an 89 Fleer error box. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but um, that is too far in advance for me to think about. Maybe the G.I. Joe video will be later this week. I'm not sure. I have some loose ends to wrap up. Maybe we'll see Junk Wax Jeopardy. Um, I don't know yet, but... Thank you guys all for being here. That was a hell of a break. Great time. I always uh, enjoy talking to you guys and having fun, interesting conversation. So until next time, guys, have a great rest of your week. I'll see you all in a couple days.